hi there. I'm Scott, and this is Great Scott Knitting, um, a vlog podcast thingy. Uh, and welcome to episode 29. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And for those of you who are new, I hope you enjoy what you find here uh, in this episode and on this channel. So be sure and check out the other stuff that I have there too. Um, today is Sunday, September 12th, 2021, and it's still hot. It was 95 degrees today. Although I will say the humidity is dramatically down, but man, I am ready for fall. I, I don't know about you, but I am, uh, I'm ready for hot cocoa and I'm ready for uh, fall colors and leaves and all that business. I'm, I'm, I'm just done with summer. I'm done with the heat. Um, but it appears that, um, through, at least through towards the end of the month, we're going to be in the upper eighties, lower nineties throughout the rest of, the, of September. So it's like, um, summer just does not want to give up. Um, but I'm, I'm over it. Um, I am, my anticipation is, is very much, uh, towards fall, towards winter, more towards fall at, at this point. Um, although I like winter too. Um, I'm not a big summer fan. Um, I like all the other seasons pretty equally, but summer, I, you know, the, the heat and I just do not get along. Um, it, it, here's the way I look at it. In the winter time, you can always put on another sweater. In the summer, there's only so many clothes you can take off before you get arrested. That's my motto. Um, I, I was going to podcast last week, so uh, apologies um, for not having done so. Uh, even though you really didn't know that that was my plan, but still, uh, I'm going to apologize anyway. Um, but last Sunday... Well, okay, let me back up a day. Uh, last Saturday, my husband um, started having some really major uh, sinus issues. We, we thought it was allergies because it is, you know, of course, the fall allergy season as well. And it turns out he had a cold. Um, and so in uh, when he when he gets sick, he, he's um, the stereotypical man very needy, very, um, it just, it, 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 not very self-sufficient. He, he needs to be taken care of, which I do. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, it, what I do have a problem with is the fact that I caught a cold as well. And so, um, on the long, for me, which was going to be a, a extended long weekend, um, because, uh, of course, last week was Labor Day. So um, uh, to to those of you who are in unions, I thank you. Um, but um, uh, so it was going to be Labor Day, but in B Labor Day night started Rosh Hashanah. So I had Tuesday off of work as well. Um, and usually on Rosh Hashanah, we have this big dinner uh, for the new year and we have apples and honey and a brisket and just all, all this stuff. I was in bed from Sunday through to through Tuesday. There was no meal. Mm -mm. I was hacking and coughing. Um, it was most definitely a cold. It was not COVID because... Here it is, about seven to almost ten days later. I'm feeling almost 100%. I'm probably probably about 95% um, back, feeling um, better. Um, so, but yeah, it, it wipes me out. So thanks to um, full strength Sudafed and Nyquil, I got through and got lots of lots of rest and lots of fluids. And uh, believe it or not, chicken soup, I believe, is a, is truly what what one needs to eat during that period of time. Um, anyway, feeling so much better now. Um, and even though I was... <coughs> I'm still, still a little tickle there. 
So even though I was uh, feeling somewhat ill, um, I still was able to get some knitting done uh, while laying up in bed. I'm going to have a little hot tea. Yes. In my, in my Chewbacca mug. I have some uh, wild berry zinger is my tea of choice with, of course, a great big thing of a dollop of honey in it to help with the old throat. Um, so yeah, I'm still pushing liquids. So I did get a lot of knitting done. So let's get into that part of the story. So um, I think last time, yeah, this was this was on the needles last time, and so it came off the needles this time, uh, this past week. Uh, the uh, lightweight hipster shawl by Hohi Locatelli knit up in my Mount Carmel yarns. And I'm calling this my toothy merino sock. It was a yarn base that I tried out that I didn't care for. It claims to be a superwash merino nylon um, base, 75-25, but it's very um, coarse. It is not soft like I'm used to merino being. So this is not a base that I'm going to be uh, carrying forward. But, um, and again, this is, and also this is not a colorway I'm going to be carrying forward because I, I have no idea how I made this. This was a uh, sort of leave no but die behind, um, dump and run kind of uh, colorway, but I really loved it. Lots of blues, um, lots of different colors of blue. But anyway, so this is that, <clears throat> the Hohi Locatelli lightweight hipster, no fringe, I'm not a fringe fan. So no fringe on this puppy, uh, even though uh, a lot of folks do add fringe to it. But anyway, um, really enjoyed this knit. It, it was fat. Number one, okay, it was fast. It's a one skein. Uh, it's a one skein shawl. It knits really fast. Um, and yeah, so it's a uh, it's a great it's great, um, and it looks so cool. Um, now these, so a couple of things, these puppies, uh, these drop stitches, so much fun and yet not, they're real fiddly. Um, not, I, I gotta be honest, I've never been a huge fan of drop stitch shawls, but I don't know, this one spoke to me because they cross, they do that crossing thing. So it gives them a bit of structure to it. And of course I'm a sucker for great big, um, the big holes that it leaves. So I like that stuff. Yes, hello, my, my, my puppy dog Sadie has come to say hello. Hello puppy dog Sadie, you need to go lay down. I'm busy. No. Um, but anyway, lots of fun. Um, highly recommend it for a quick holiday knit. Of course, we are getting into the holiday knit time of year. Um, and because um, many of the gifts that are given out of this house uh, come from my stock of shawls, hats, scarves, and uh, whatnots, um, yeah, so I need to get busy uh, knitting some really quick, easy shawls and scarves and hats. Uh, not much into mittens or gloves. Um, I, yeah, it's it's too too fiddly for me. Um, but hats, I'm gonna be getting getting into some hat season. I've fin been feeling the hat vibe coming along. Um, so, uh, things that are still on the needles, and I say still on the needles, uh, ooh, gotta be careful. Those are gonna fall off the needles if I'm not careful. My sock. It's still one, it's still just one sock. There's not like, this is from July. 
I'm still fiddling around with this. I, I Actually, I haven't touched it in two weeks. But yeah, I'm still fiddling around with this darn thing. Um, I, I love it. It's just, I don't know. I'm just not in the sock mood, I guess. I need to get it done. I need to just delve into it and say, screw it. I'm going to finish this darn thing. Um, so yeah, that's still going on. But naturally, of course, over the last, I think it was just after I last podcasted, yeah, after the last episode, I decided to cast on a Scrappy project. And the Scrappy project I am casting, I have cast on is the Zigzag Scarf. And let's see, Zigzag Scarf, who is that by? Um, that is by, oh yeah, uh, Christy Cam. And so this is just a, a bunch of leftover, you know, scrap balls of yarn from socks and, and other shawl projects, all fingering weight. And I'm just kind of marling it together. So it's looking cool. And I have a lot to choose. I have two bags of this stuff to work with. So, yeah, that's been going on, which I'll probably just continue to knit little bits and pieces of this as things go along. I'm getting back into a, the busy part of my month, um, so I'm not sure how much further I'm going to go along with those. Now, um, of course, as soon as I got done with this shawl, I, instead of like going to either my socks or my um instead of going to the socks i went to the ravelry and started looking for another project so that's what i did i did another project um the other project i threw on or cast on is called the easy goes it shawl and that is by, let's see, Easy Goes It is by Finicky Creations. Um, so it's just a basic sort of um, boomerangy type of shawl. Uh, a couple of details that are in it. It's just a garter stitch shawl, but there's a couple of uh, stockinette sections with this little ridge going on. So these little sort of welted stripes. And then the um, yarn over section, the, just some basic um, basic lacy hole type things. And then more garter stitch and then more lacy and then more or and more um, stockinette welts and then more lace and so on and so on until it is till you run out of yarn. So it's real simple. Um, the yarn I am using is Neighborhood Fiber, and this is their Rustic Fingering Base. It is a single ply. I don't know if you can check that out, if you can see the single ply in this there. Um, it's single, single ply yarn, fingering weight, um, low t relatively low twist. It's 475 yards to the 100 gram ball. Um, and the color weight is called Cherry Hill. Um, but to me, it's actually more reminiscent of like peaches. I see a more peachy vibe to it personally, because there's the dark, um, you know, some of the light, light aspects of the skin and the meat of a peach and then the dark, you know, how it gets towards the pit and it has that sort of dark, almost red color. Anyway, I think it's peachy, not so much cherry, but I, I don't know. I kind of see the cherry concept to it, but it's called Cherry Hill is the colorway. Uh, um, they still have rustic yarn or, or the rustic fingering at Neighborhood Fiber on their website, but they don't have this colorway. So it is it has been in my stash for a couple of years. Um, yeah. Sorry for the slurps, but it's really super hot. 
Um. Oh, oh, I forgot to say what the yarn was on my sock, which is I am at the point where I'm going on the gusset. So I just need to continue gusseting. Uh, but this, the yarn is, uh, let me go back in my notes. The yarn is Amber Waves of Fiber, which is a Kansas dyer local to Wichita. And this is simply a one batch only. It's on their simple sock base, which is again, a 7525 Superwash Merino, um, 463 yards. So a very basic uh, four ply uh, yarn. Uh, so very nice, love the color. It's pinks and blues, knitting up very nicely. I love it. It's just, I'm just not been in a sock mood. I've been wanting to do something more interesting with the knitting. Um, so I, when I get back to a point where I'm feeling maybe overwhelmed with things, I'll just do that around and round business. Um, uh, but that's not where I've been lately. Um, I'm wanting fiddly projects that have these fiddly drop laces that you do crossover and I don't know. They're fun. So there's that. Uh, so that's the end of my works in progress. Um, wow, it's actually going to be kind of maybe a short show um, this week. Oh, well, that's okay. Lots going on here at the end of the year or at the end of summer, beginning of fall. It's okay to have a short show, I suppose. Um, so those of you who may have missed last time I podcast, um, that you may have missed out on some news of what's going on here, but I did open up an Etsy store for my hand dyed yarn. It is called uh, Mount Carmel Yarns. And you can find it on Etsy. I'll put the link down here. But you can also find the link in the show notes down below. Please go check that out. Um, it's really kind of important that you pay attention uh, to uh, what I'm about to tell you. And also look in the show notes. Um, I have been open just at a month. I opened on the 15th of August officially. Well, that's when I... like click the button that said publish, open, whatever. Um, and so the 15th is on Wednesday. So technically, um, on Wednesday, I'm going to let the general, uh, uh, you know, world know that through, through the social media worlds, um, that I'm going to have a little, uh, uh, sale going on on the the colorways and uh, yarn that is currently ready to sell in the shop and is there and so I'm going to have a 15% off sale starting on Wednesday but for those of you listening to this podcast um, and if it is still in the week of September 13th through the 19th, um, you can get 15% off at my shop with coupon code MCY1MONTH, MCY1MONTH. Again, I'll put that here. It's also going to be in the show notes down below. Um, so for those of you who are listening, you get tomorrow, Tuesday, um, tomorrow and Tuesday before I publish it to the rest of the world. So you get two days of using that 15% off code simply because you watched this podcast. Um, so there you go. So on Wednesday, I'm going to let the rest of the world know. So if you want to get out there, buy up what I have. That's great. Um, if you are interested in more of any of the colorways that are currently out there, let me know, um, send me a message, and um, I will attempt to um, 
fulfill some of your orders within reason. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you, if there's a colorway that seems to be low or it's on a DK base and you would rather have it on a sock, on my basic sock base or on a high twist, um, let me know. I can fulfill your needs. Um, however, with you, there are no, the, the, the discount will not apply to the, any custom orders, um, because of the fiddliness of that. Um, cause I, I do have a day job, so I have, I do have business first and then, uh, in my evenings and on weekends is when I do all of my, uh, dying. So if you do have a custom order that is currently not on sale, um, so that'll be at the regular price, but anything that is ready to sell 15% off, grab it up. Um, I'd be glad to send that out. And to those of you who have already purchased yarn from me, um, thank you so very much. Um, I appreciate uh, the, the fact that you guys went out there, looked at what I had, liked it, and I was able to send you squishy mail. Um, I'll have you know that I am excited to send it, send out these squishy packages uh, as I am to receive squishy packages. I mean, I'm excited when I, like, I, I, like, I make the label, I put it out there, you know, the, the notification goes that, that, uh, I'm, it's going into the mail and then I drop it off at the, at the mailbox. And then like that night I'm like, looking at it's like, have they, you know, have, has it, has it gone out yet? Has it, has it left Wichita? Is it on its way? And then I was like, I keep my eye on it to see that it gets to its destination. I was like, oh, it's out for delivery. They're going to be getting it. Oh, okay. I hope they like it. You know, all, I, I get that excited about you getting my yarn. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one thing that's happening. Um, so another thing that's going on is um, talk about anticipation. Stephen West's um, West Knits Mi uh, Mystery Knit Along, uh, the MCAL for 2021 is out. Well, I mean, not out yet. It doesn't start until October 8th. Um, yeah, October 8th. So this is the first Friday in October is when that drops. No, second Friday. It's the first Friday is on a first. Um, so yeah, Shawlography is, is coming. And this is going to be my first mystery knit along that I've ever participated in. I'm really excited about it. Um, so I've, I, I've, I've purchased the pattern, got that going. Um, but I missed out on purchasing a sock set. And well, the other reason that I'm not purchasing a sock set or, or the, the uh, fingering weight five skeins of yarn that is required is, um, well, never mind. Uh, I'm just not. So I'm deciding to dye up my own. Hey, I happen to know a yarn dyer real close to me. Oh yeah, it's me. So um, the past week, my focus um, has been coming up with the colors that I wanted. So I wanted some very fall-like colors is kind of where I landed with this. <clears throat> and so here are those colors. Um, I'm starting off with this sort of fawn. Oh, here, I can drop this out of the way. That's in the way. So this sort of fawnish color of yeah, there it is. Um, it's it, it's a sort of a real sandy tan brown. So this is my light color. Um, my medium is this sort of a medium um, reddish purple, and then my dark is this dark brown this uh sort of reddish it has a reddish brown but it's like it's like uh very dark very saturated uh in its color um so those are those are the 
dark, medium, and light. And my pops of color, as, as if this wasn't a big enough pop of color, are a medium or a, a yeah, sort of a, a medium light um, yellowish orange, kind of a goldish color, and then a deeper purple. Although it's kind of showing up blue, but it is definitely, it is a purplish color. And so all together, from light to dark, erg, here are the colorways. Get it up there. There we go. Anyway, those are the colorways that I am using for shawlography. I'm excited. Yay. <laughs> I'm really super excited. Um, and I love these colors. Actually, I love these colors so much. My plan is to um, dye up these into uh, and throw them up in my shop on some of the, my some of my various bases if um, I got in a a special order of a new base that I'm trying out which is a 100% superwash merino fingering no nylon um, but it is a superwash fingering um, that I wanted for uh, like shawl project um, as a non-sock fingering weight yarn. Um, it's really lovely. It's the 100% Superwash Merino wool. It is a 100 gram skein coming in about 437 yards. So it's a little tighter twist than my sock base, um, but still quite, quite soft and quite lovely. Um, so I'm trying that base out and that's what I'm gonna be doing these on. Uh, my, of course, these are just minis that I was playing around with trying to figure out colors. Um, so I'm going to be doing up my, my full skein set. I've started my full skein set. I have, um, one skein done and one, uh, finishing up in the pots, even as we speak, uh, which are actually these two colorways are my, are my first two. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> So let me know, either in, uh, you know, send me a message um, or let me know in the notes, uh, in, in comments down below, if you would be interested in having your own set of uh, my, my colorways for shawlography. I have no idea what I'm going to call these colors yet because I am going to offer these, all of these colors, and then probably a variegated that's made up of some of these colors as well. Um, I'm going to offer that, offer these colors in my shop on some of my various bases, uh, my basic sock and my um, uh, Merino DK, and maybe even some of my high twist. Um, if you're interested in a set on uh, either the high twist, the basic sock, or my new merino fingering, um, let me know. Um, because I'd be glad to die up another set um, for these. Um, as a set, I'll probably, they won't be, it, it probably won't be the full, um, I don't know. I'm not sure what my pricing will be. I'll have to let you know on that. Um, but if you're interested in that, let me know. That way I can die up some sets and have those available. Um, and let me know what base you would prefer those on. Because um, my high twist is a two-ply. Um, and it is a really high twist. Yeah, the fingering is 357 yards. Oh, it should probably still be good um, for the shawlography. But let me know. Um, or, and I do have... Um, enough of my merino fingering base to do um, a couple of sets on that base as well so um 
I don't know when the individual skeins will be in the shop um, or uh, if no one says they want any any sets then I probably won't put them together as sets but I am going to be throwing these colorways for fall out into my shop and probably add in uh, a variegated uh, type of colorway as well based on some of these colors because it's just kind of change things up um is that it for my shop update uh coupon code shawlography you guys get early coupon code because you're watching um yeah that's it um cool so that's it for the uh craziness of my knitting world which is uh quite quite crazy um work itself is getting busy um of course we're coming up to our uh the busy season for medicare which is or especially medicare advantage um open enrollment for those of you who are on medicare is starting on october 15th however you can find out what the new plans are for 2022 starting on october 1st so um, open or not open enrollment, but annual enrollment period starts on October 15th, um, when is, which is when you can get into a new Medicare Advantage plan, and that runs through October, or December 7th. Um, and those are for plans for starting in 2022. Uh, that's just my, there's my little public service announcement for anyone who is either uh, who is on uh, Medicare currently, be it you are over 65 or you have Medicare for some other reason. Um, I highly recommend Medicare Advantage plans. They are, they tend to be inexpensive um, and they tend to also give you some really nice health benefits that go beyond just doctor visits and hospital visits. So check those things out. I don't care if you call my company or some other company that's out there, but check out what's available to you starting in 2022. Um, and you can start looking at those plans the 1st of October. Um, so that's my little job thing that I'm doing. I'm training folks how to help you find those plans. And basically I, I work for a brokerage service and I do training for uh, Medicare Advantage. So that's work. <clears throat> um, what else is going on? Um, current entertainment. Oh, yeah. So I've been watching The Bad Batch on Disney+. Plus. It's a Star Wars uh, based on the a um, particular troop of clone troopers who are genetically um, defective, one would say, um, and which makes them highly uh, adaptable. Anyway, the, uh, the Bad Batch follows this troop th uh, at the end of the Clone Wars and how they uh, adapted to uh, life outside of the, uh, being a clone trooper in a war and also being hunted by the Imperials. So very interesting show. I really enjoyed it. It goes very, very well um, with the Clone Wars, which I also finished watching all the way through again. Um, only this time I watched it chronologically, which for the first three seasons um, n is not entirely in chronological order. So you have to jump around a little bit for chron uh, for a chronological pathway through. The last two seasons are almost entirely uh, chronological from the beginning of the season to the end. But anyway, watched that again. Loved it again. Um, I still love uh, uh, the character of Ahsoka. I, I almost find that the whole Clone Wars was more about her than any of the other characters. Um, 
I'm really, really looking forward to the concept of her getting, of that character having its own live action show. Um, so we'll see if that comes along. Um, another thing we watched as a family, we finally had a family movie night and it's been forever since we've done that. Uh, we watched Cinderella from Amazon, the, the new rendition of Cinderella. Um, which I really, really liked. I'm surprised that I did. Um, it is not the, it is a Cinder, it is a musical, but it is not the Cinderella musical that you may, um, those of my age may remember from uh, televised Cinderella musicals in the past. This is not a Broadway, uh, the broad Broadway show. This is a retelling using um contemporary music uh to tell the story um which at first i was a little put off by it but then i was like you know what i like where it went instead of this cinderella looking for um and hoping to to gain a man to uh carry her away from from her dreadful existence um, this Cinderella is highly empowered, uh, talented in her own right, and the prince is the one who's basically in, <coughs> excuse me, it, ba the, it's more the prince that is in a situation that is untenable, and he's looking to find a way, in a sense, out of his situation. Um, and so he's the one seeking a, a new, a new, I mean, they're both seeking a new existence. Um, but what's different is she falls in love with the prince, but is more in love with her own vision of her life. And so he's the one that has to adjust. Uh, I really liked it. I'm not going to tell any more, uh, give away any more if you haven't watched it. Please go to Amazon, check it out. It's really delightful. The music and the singing is really fun. Um, it's contemporary, so you're not going to be like, oh, ooh, musical. It's much more. It, it's much more enjoyable. It's uh, uh, made by the same producer as um, Pitch Perfect. So if you liked Pitch Perfect, which I love, Pitch Perfect, um, both. Uh, both a uh, uh, Pitch Perfect 1 and 2. Um, so I really did enjoy this uh, this movie. It was really good. Um, I have been doing some audio listening. Um, as I don't have a lot of time to actually read physical books uh, with... Uh, and it's hard to read physical books while you're knitting because the turning of the pages is... It's, uh, it, listening is just so much easier. So... I'm still waiting for the second book of that fairy, um, uh, the, the, the gay romance uh, set in a fairy, uh, in, in the fairy courts. So I'm waiting for the second book of that to become available for my library so that I can listen to it. Uh, it hasn't yet. So I moved on to a different series called the Lunar Academy Year One series by Alyssa Rose. There are four books in that series um, following the four houses of the Lunar Academy. Now, the Lunar Academy is an academy uh, college for um, werewolves of different types. There are the wolf born who are born into being werewolves. There's wolf blood, who are werewolf vampire hybrids. There's the wolf bound, which are witch and werewolf hybrids. And then there's the wolf bitten, which as the uh, uh, title would uh, give away, are the ones who are turned invol sometimes voluntarily, but often involuntarily. So this college is where they go to learn to control their wolf um, and to learn about their wolf in, in different ways. Um, so it is very much a... Um, the, the way they set it up is they have a male and female character in the, each of these houses. So the first book is called Wolf Born. 
And so it's all about uh, a male and female character <coughs> in the wolf born house. They, of course, get together, a romance ensues. Um, but then there's this sort of underlying um, drama going on at Lunar Academy that involves each of the four houses. So each of the book books is devoted to these uh, pairs in each of the different houses and how they become involved in the drama. Pardon me. Um, it's good. I was hoping actually for, I, I can't remember where I found this because I, I looked up I was searching for, again, more sort of gay romances, especially in the fantasy and sci-fi world, because you don't get a lot of that um, representation in that genre of, of novels. And so I was uh, hoping that this had that, and it hasn't yet, at least, in the three of those four books that I've listened to. The third one is still not yet available at my library. I, I, I get them electronically from my library. And so the third one is still checked out by somebody else. And so I'm waiting for it to come in. And oddly enough, I listened to the fourth one first, not realizing that it was the fourth one in the series, but that's okay. Um, it actually didn't um, require me to listen to it first or last or whatever. So... It was fine. I went back and listened to the other, t the other two that I had available and um, didn't feel like I was lost. Um, so anyway, been listening to that. It's okay. Um, I'll probably, would. I'm, I'm, of course, I'm hooked into the storyline now. And so I want to kind of know where, it, <coughs> where that goes. <clears throat> all right. So I'm getting all coffee. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, so thank you all for tuning in, showing up, um, listening to my, uh, my, my rantings and ravings. Um, please do go check out my little store, buy some of my yarns, um, listen to last podcast to hear all about, um, some of the storyline, some of the, the inspiration behind the yarn colors that are currently in my shop. Um, the, uh, of course, the inspiration for these yarn colors is shawography, but I'll come up with some little... I don't even know what the names of these are going to be yet. Um, I th have a feeling this one is going to be called Adama, which means grounded, because it looks like, you know, because it's a very dark, earthy... Um, sort of, you know, land, ground, Adama, uh, which is the Hebrew term for ground, earth, uh, land, soil. So there's that one. I don't know what the others are going to be called. Um, I'm toying with some, some naming conventions for the others. Uh, being sort of around the idea of attributes of that I I don't know I don't know we'll find out naming is not one of my big strong suits yet so we'll come up with names anyway so if you have ideas for some of these you know go back look at the look at these colors again and tell me what names you think might be appropriate um Anyway, so give me a shout out in comments on um, whether you're interested in your own set or uh, whatever else you might want to give me a little shout out about. Uh, I love reading your comments, uh, so give me more. Um, let me know what you've been up to, what you're working on, um, what's your favorite bread recipe, all that business. Um, you can find me in the social media world. Uh, I have my Facebook pages for Great Scott Knitting, this podcast. And I also have a Facebook page for Mount Carmel Yarns. So I will have those links in the show notes below. You can find me on Instagram as Great Scott Knitting and as Mount Carmel Yarns. Uh, you can find me in Ravelry as Great Scott KCMO. 
and I do have a Ravelry group there as well that will be linked in the show notes below. So cool. Now you have all that business. So um, be sure to hit like if you are a new viewer uh, or if you're a returning viewer and you haven't done so, click subscribe. Um, it, you it simply by clicking subscribe, you simply get notified of when I um, upload new content, especially if you hit the little bell icon, you can sort of determine how often you get those notifications. Um, it's not a, it's not, you're not signing up for anything. Um, but it, what it does is it helps my channel grow and reach more people. The more people that subscribe, it's kind of a catch 22. Um, anyway, like subscribe, all that business. I appreciate it. If you could, um, so anyway, thank you so much for watching. May you have peace in your home and the fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Bye.